What's up guys, Lou here, and today we're going to talk about Apple's next generation Mac Pro. As you probably know, we finally have specifications on two different models for the next gen system. The first one is a four core version at $3,000, and then there's a six core version at $4,000. But this, of course, is not the entire story. Apple has announced that there will be a 12 core version available as a CTO or a customization. And as in the past with the Mac Pro series specifically, you've been able to improve things like the RAM and the hard drive space. Of course, now we're talking about SSD space. So this video aims to find out what is the maximum specification Mac Pro and what might that cost. Spoiler alert, it ain't gonna be cheap. We'll get started with the baseline six core system and work up from there. The first thing to swap out is the CPU. As stated, a 12 core version will be available. In order to figure out the rough cost, I used this chart from Intel, which lists the suggested price for its Xeon E5 series. The 12 core chip lists for $2,614. That's just a CPU. Next, I subtracted the cost of the six core chip from the cost of the 12 core version, which produces a rough idea of the upgrade figure. The difference is about 2000 bucks. Just like that, we've jumped up to 6,000 total for the most basic 12 core Mac Pro, but we're far from maximum specification. We've still got to upgrade the RAM, SSD, and graphics. Let's do the graphics next. The top spec here is listed as the Fire Pro D700 from AMD. This appears to be a unique name given to GPUs destined for the Mac Pro, but internally it matches the exact spec of the currently available PC equivalent card, the Fire Pro W9000. It looks like every Mac Pro will be shipping with dual GPUs. This means a top spec version should have two D700s, otherwise known as the W9000. So how much is a W9000 workstation GPU? GPU worth? Oh, right around three G's times two. That's $6,000 of graphics. Add that to the 12 core upgrade and we're sitting around 12,000 bucks. Of course, Apple could always credit back some value for the stock components that are being replaced via these customizations, but in the past, that's rarely been the case. Apple tends to charge top dollar for GPU upgrades, overshadowing any kind of credit for the stock cards. Let's quickly add on the max RAM, 64 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC memory. This should run around 800 bucks. Lastly, we'll need the maximum storage, listed as a one terabyte PCIe type SSD drive. Apple hasn't shipped this type of storage with the Mac Pro in the past, so it's tough to determine exactly what they'll be using. That being said, the previous gen PCIe upgrade from OWC may offer some insight into what something like this might cost. The biggest they've got is 960 gigabytes at around $1,200. I'm fairly certain that this type of SSD form factor won't be the one used in the next Pro. Nonetheless, a one terabyte SSD upgrade will likely cost around $1,000. Rounding up ever so slightly, we're now sitting at $14,000 for a 12 core, 64 gigabyte RAM, dual D700, one terabyte SSD Mac Pro. But we're just getting started. We need some displays to go with this system or we'll have trouble using all that power. Option one, the Mac Pro supports up to six Thunderbolt displays. These displays feature a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and cost $999 each. This option will add 6,000 to our total, which is now sitting at 20 grand. Option two is even more fun. Apple has stated that the next gen Mac Pro is capable of powering three 4K displays. For the ultimate spec, I decided to select the PQ321Q, a 31.5 inch 4K monster from ASUS. These go for around 3,400. For the Mac spec, we'll need three $10,200. Total system price, just under 25 grand. The craziest part of all is that someone, somewhere in the world will be sitting in front of this exact configuration come December. There will always be people looking for the ultimate, and in this case, it's going to cost them big time. There you have it, a $25,000 workstation with just under 25 million pixels. 
Now you know what the ultimate configuration of next gen Mac Pro could possibly cost. We will of course figure this out when it launches in December. Before I take off, I wanna give a big shout out to everyone who helped me with the research for this video by sending me links and having a discussion on Twitter. Those people are Austin Evans, MKBHD, Detroit Borg, and TLD Today. I hope I didn't miss anybody. But yeah, we were all talking about what kind of SSDs they might use in this next gen Mac Pro since that information is not out there. So big thanks to those guys for getting involved in the discussion and helping contribute to this video. All right, guys, that wraps this up. If you enjoyed this content, please remember to leave a thumbs up down below. If you're not a subscriber, now is a great time to become one. And I will catch you very shortly on the next video. All right, have a good one. Later.